and when she wants to know the name and a brief description of this new weapon, it behooves everybody for you to be like, um, it's objectively speaking, it is a combat weapon and it's meant for an individual and we call it the OICW. All right, folks, I am slightly late on this one, but today we are doing a sequel to the last video from the Fiber Extrusion, and that was on the AR... Some, something is wrong here. <laughs> I blanked for a moment there. ACR program. Sorry about that. Um, this was the one, the $300 million program, where they kind of fumbled everything just to figure out that uh, basically guns have precision improvement if you add a scope to them. Yeah, it, it took them that far to actually make a prototype for the most obvious thing. But today we are checking out the best and most sci-fi weapon that I think the military has had, except for some of the rail guns that they planned on making. This was something that I mentioned once in a Marty Stopin's video relating to, uh, well, space programs well at least for one of the story it was the navy yeah that, that one also was abandoned doesn't matter but this one is the xm29 the starship trooper gun or for my fellow gamers out there the tom clancy explosive gun that you may have encountered if you played the early titles yeah with tom clancy rolling in his grave in how the franchise has turned out to be but that being said though let us just straight up jump into the video okay i guess part two of all the weird future weapons the government wasted our money on Today we're talking about that time that Uncle Sam decided that he wanted to take the M16, the US military's primary firearm, and replace it with a grenade launcher. But first an angry rant, I mean an ad, brought to you by my favorite news app, Ground News. They collect news from over 50,000 sources, device. sticking it into one convenient I have app, it. allowing you to compare all the news coverage in one convenient location. Allowing you to simply swipe over to read different headlines for the same exact story, being able to tell which outlet is biased and which isn't, and how factual yeah. their articles actually are. And that fact Sexuality rating is really important because every once in a while some dumb stuff happens, you know, like the Marine Corps pulling a Wonder Woman and forgetting where they parked the invisible jet. <laughs> oh, no. What seems to be the trouble? There we go. It reached him too. God damn it, this is such a dumb story. Wonder Woman? I locked my keys in the jet. Holy keys locked in the jet, Batman. Because in times like these, real news Dick and facts Grayson. always gets Calm drowned down. out by crazy conspiracy theories like... You know, my uncle back in the day thought about joining the military and he said that it's probably because the pilot had TikTok installed on his phone and that Chinese malware somehow seeped into the F-35 and took over the F-35, ejected the pilot, and then flew itself to Cuba. I mean, probably... <laughs> you know what's fun about that? It isn't even that far-fetched of a theory. I'm imagining literally some of my grandparents who will think of stuff like that. Probably not, it was more than likely just some dumb shit, you know, like there was a legitimate malfunction that caused the pilot to eject, and then Lockheed Martin forgot to put a kill switch inside the seat, so the autopilot just kept the plane going for another 80 miles and nobody could track it because it's a because stealth, stealth plane. And now, thanks to ground news, I know that the government is trying to pull the oldest trick in the military handbook of this claiming was it's a feature and not a fuck up. Okay, look, I'm not trying to say that I'm smart enough to build a stealth fighter, all I'm saying is I've got a lawnmower in my garage and whenever I get off the seat while the mower is running, it, it shuts stops. down. And if I was going to build an $80 million plane, I would probably incorporate something along those lines. But hey, maybe that's the lesson to be learned here. The government should actually be investing in Toro zero turn radius fighter jets because this would have never happened and it would bring a whole new meaning to the phrase mowing down the enemy. Wow. That was a nice joke there. But it's true, though. I, I really hate sometimes when things that everybody <laughs> obviously has seen like you you don't need to be an expert in the field like these things were reported before like general mike obvious news reports of something like this has happened before we kind of know where this is going don't try to gaslight us and for you you should probably be investing in ground news and now let's get back to the video all right so operation give everybody a grenade launcher is officially known as the oicw program which stands for objective individual combat weapon why on earth would you call it that well because the weapon they made was the xm29 aka the tactical car door that is a 20 millimeter grenade launcher that fires programmable smart grenades on top and a german g36 ah, on the bottom and that's when your what end the red goal is to give a weapon that ridiculous to scope every is for. single grunt in the u.s military you kind of have to give it a bland acronym of a nickname because when Geneva finds out that you're replacing the M16, she's gonna have some questions. Oh, that's an angle that I actually haven't thought about. 
I guess that's why it's written war crimes because on the rules about uh, explosive rounds, which is kind of weird because recently uh, there, there was yet another mishap of a missile hitting the wrong town in Ukraine. We say allegedly it was a mistake. It was not a target, right? That's that's always how that song and dance goes. But like we have established rules of what constitutes too much cruelty in combat. And I do believe that explosive rounds are part of that. I may be wrong about it, but hopefully he'll, he'll mention that. But my point with bringing up the whole Ukraine thing is that although this is happening, we, we can all pretty much guess that when it really counts, they will not take those rules into consideration. It's not like Vlad the Short is going to stand there with the D&D rulebook and try to find out if this rule is accurate to the combat method. And when she wants to know the name and a brief description of this new weapon, it behooves everybody for you to be like, um, it's objectively speaking, it is a combat weapon and it's meant for an individual and we call it the OICW. Because right. the last thing the brass wants to do is go in there and tell the truth. I've, um, it's it's a semi-automatic grenade launcher with an underslung 5.56 rifle. I, we don't have an official name for it yet, but the boys are calling it the Baloney Mist Maker 5000. Once that happens, it's all downhill from there. Next thing you know, people are asking questions. People are making points, you know, like, hey, exploding bullets have been illegal since 1899. Would you care to explain the difference between an exploding bullet and a really small grenade that gets shot out of a gun? It Oh, so it actually predates the Geneva Convention, so pff, forget about all what I said. It's older than that. It would be a complete nightmare. So, acronym seems dumb, actually very important. It's basically camouflage at this point. I'm just going to be honest with you, that tangent was not supposed to be part of the video, and I have no idea how to continue from here. So, I'm just going to rewind and start over, okay? Well, okay. See you in a second. <laughs> Today, we're talking about America's <laughs> Starship Trooper weapon, the XM-29. It's a beautiful piece of weaponry, but I, I'm kind of bewildered as to why the launcher is reversed in contrast to most. All right, so picking up where we left off, last week we covered the ACR program, the Advanced Combat Rifle. If you don't remember, basically the military came out right after Vietnam and said, hey, we want a new weapon to replace the M16. We want it to be twice as accurate as the M16 is. And all the weapons manufacturers took that as, hey, let's build a bunch of space guns to hunt aliens with. There was all kinds of craziness going on. They had guns that were shooting darts. They had guns that had grandfather clocks inside of them. And Colt <laughs> even made a gun that every time you shot a bad guy, it was worth double XP. And when the yeah. smoke settled from all this ridiculous innovation, somewhere along the way, the military came to the conclusion of like, oh, instead of trying to rebuild a gun from the ground up, we could just put a scope on the M16 and it'd be way more accurate. And that's right. the story of how the American military got ACOGs in the M145 combat optic, which is great. The only problem was they spent $300 million to figure out that guns are more accurate when you put scopes on them and now people want answers so the government launched an internal investigation against itself and you're never going to believe what happened the government determined that the government did nothing wrong uh, the all too common story is like we have conducted a very thorough investigation of all of the allegation and we have found ourselves free of any wrongdoings. For that reason, we will now send each and every member that might be uh, causing a little bit of trouble for news on paid leave. And uh, yeah, that's that's going to be it, folks. Um, I am going now on my coffee break, so if you'll excuse me. You see, the program didn't fail because of corruption or the government's inability to point out obvious shit. Clearly, the program Somebody failed didn't Google. because the government has done such an incredible job with the M16A2. It it's simply perfection. can't be beat ever. It is the pinnacle of ballistic performance. They have maxed out the skill tree on small arms and bullets. There's nothing else that can be done. We live in a golden age. Everything worth discovering, discovering has, has been, been discovered, discovered said Lord Kelvin calmly. Oh my God. Uh, this is... um. Around the Earth in 80 Days, great movie, 2004. There's a 21, uh, 2021 version that I have yet to see with uh, one of the doctors of, of the Doctor Who's, uh, the guy who played Purple Man, I can't remember his name, in Jessica Jones, but yeah, pretty good. The court then goes on to recommend that if the government still wanted to increase the lethality of its soldiers, the only option they should pursue is an explosive option, i.e. we're all getting grenade launchers. Yes! 
That's awesome. So they fire up the government contracts, and this time they do actually have a declared winner, and that is HK with their submission, the XM29. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine to, to everybody. Fair, technologically speaking, this thing is actually really impressive. That scope on top isn't just a scope. It's a regular scope, a night vision scope, a thermal scope, a range and... finder, and a ballistic calculator all in one. And using yeah, this setup, they're impressive. able to pre-program every grenade before they fire it to air burst mode so it blows up at a certain distance away from the gun, not necessarily before it hits something. Which is smart, right? Like because usually you need a hard surface to detonate those but what is stopping oh fuck oh yeah it's all coming together I, okay i think that i figured out the, the the thing that is going to crack this whole case open i'm going to shut my mouth because my brain is running on overdrive right now all right so in theory for example how this is supposed to work is say there's a bad guy hiding behind a concrete wall so you whip out the baloney mist maker 5000 you then point the gun at the concrete wall the bad guy's hiding behind you click this little dot button by the trigger that tells the laser range finder how far away the wall is then if you want it to explode a little bit past the wall you hit uh. the plus a few times now the grenade is going to be programmed to explode a little bit past the distance of where that wall is away from you so then you just fire the grenade right over the top of the wall and it's going to explode as soon as it passes the wall right on top of the enemy's head and that's pretty ingenious engineering but what stops it for becoming an explosive round as you could just shoot it into someone and made it explode in said someone and then if the situation doesn't really call for grenades, it also has an underslung 5.56 rifle that is essentially the HKG-36. And most importantly, on that rifle, to answer the question that every Marine has had since the very beginning of this video, yes, there is a bayonet lug for this weapon. I mean, could you imagine being the guy that gets taken out with a bayonet on the end of this monstrosity? You're just sitting up there at the pearly gate waiting to find out if you're going up or down. Somebody leans over and is like, hey, what happened to you? Oh, I got hit with a drone strike. What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'm... A marine jumped into my trench and stabbed me with a piece of luggage. I think, yeah, that that will definitely be embarrassing. Somebody will be <laughs> saying the deepest and darkest eulogy, going like, "Oh shit." That's deep, bro. Yeah, and so was my knife wound. Oh, touche. So this begs the question, why on earth didn't the United States adopt this thing if it's so awesome? Well, it's awesome in theory. It's not so awesome in practice. There's a lot of things wrong with it. For one, this thing empty with no ammunition inside of it weighs 18 pounds, which is Ooh. very heavy. For a That's a full infant. Yeah, using uh, the right measurements here. <laughs> But yeah, that's a baby. A firearm. Uh, to put that into perspective, an M16 kitted out with a grenade launcher, an ACOG, a PEC-15 IR unit, the whole shebang is about 12 pounds. So this thing is 50% heavier. Also with the XM29, there was just some bad design ideas. Okay, so if we look at the M16 with the M203 grenade launcher, notice how it shoots bullets and it shoots grenades and there is a trigger Two for triggers, shooting grenades yeah. and there is a trigger for shooting bullets they're separate then you look over at the xm29 there's only one trigger and it shoots both bullets and grenades the switch ah oh, fuck me that that's just prime for errors uh, obviously a lot of muscle memory can go into remembering in which one you're switched on to but hey if you have it on high explosive and suddenly somebody just passes by and <laughs> and the only differentiator between the two is this little selector switch right here ke standing for kinetic energy K or energy. bullets and he standing high for high explosive yeah. so i mean you can imagine somebody forgetting where their selector switch is firing a warning shot and whoops Kaboom. that was a grenade not a 556 five, round my bad. Okay, third and final reason, it was just going to be a logistical nightmare all the way throughout because that big ass fancy scope on top is going to take batteries. And if you can't get batteries to make that scope work, the range yeah. finder isn't going to work, which means you can't program suck. smart grenades, which means you're basically carrying around an 18 pound gun that is ultimately a 5.56 rifle with a 9 inch barrel and a 9 inch barrel at 5.56 gives you a range of like 200 yards so it just doesn't work out if you don't have batteries secondly oh. even if you can get batteries all the way there you got to have smart grenades which have microchips on them microchips why is that an issue um, and i don't know what you know about american manufacturing but we're not that great at making microchips and the places we get all our microchips from are either places we're likely to go to war with or places that are bordering places that we're likely to go to war with which could pose a huge issue in ammo procurement should war break out 
out. So now, a using a little bit of my gamer creds here, I do know that some of the biggest manufacturers of microchips in the world will be the likes of Taiwan, Japan, uh, not Singapore. They don't know in the market. China, obviously, okay, I, I get his point there. But isn't Texas like pretty damn high on the list as well? Technos Manufacturing, uh, what are they called? They have a specific name. I'll, I'll find it and put it into the video. But yeah, I'm pretty damn sure that Texas is also one of the leading ones in production of microchips. So I, I don't think that America is so far behind, but like America fighting itself. That could be a thing. <laughs> Because of all these reasons in 2004, the chief of the infantry steps up and is like, absolutely not. I'm not sending all these guys out to the front lines carrying tactical car doors. This is not happening. Kill the program. It's over. So at this point, all oh. the other high ranking brass and bureaucrats and weapons contractors are like, well, this is kind of an issue because this program was going to be the reason that it was OK that we messed up the last program that cost <laughs> $300 million. And now we've spent a bunch of more money on this program, so Oof. much so that we're not even going to tell the public how much we kind of have to make this program work. So so what if we kept the program alive and we just split this gun into two pieces? We'll have the rifle that's going to replace the M16, and then we'll also have this cool, smart grenade launcher. How oh, so that's what happened. So Okay, so it, it now makes sense why I've seen more pictures of this one rather than the, the thing combined. That makes sense. Okay. How about that. To which the Pentagon is like, oh my God, what a terrific idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And I can't prove this part, but the word on the street has always been at this point in the project, the only feedback the Pentagon gave about the actual rifle portion Let was, and I quote, make sure it's more Starship Troopers like. And this is where the XM8 comes from. Aha. And while the G8 does look really cool and super futuristic, ultimately it was just the German service rifle, the G36, that HK took and wrapped inside of a plastic body kit to make it look cooler and then tried to sell it to the American government. And their big selling point was going to be that the new XM8 was going to be modular, meaning that you could take different barrel lengths and stick them on the same gun, making it so it was better at different types of combat. If you were going okay. to be doing a bunch of close quarters combat, you could have a little short barrel. And if you're going to be doing further out combat, you could have a longer barrel for improved accuracy, which nice. honestly is a terrific idea. Good work. The problem is the AR platform, the M16, the M4, it can already do that. So just to be clear, it doesn't do anything new that the M16 isn't already doing and it shoots the exact same bullet. So there's pretty much no reason whatsoever. Did they have a new scope? <laughs> Did they at least keep a bit, like, reduce the size of the original scope that they had in the XM29 and then somehow made it fit on this one? To waste the money in switching rifles to a rifle that's basically the same. But there's money and reputations on the line, so they're going to keep trying to make it happen anyways. They end up ordering a bunch of prototypes, have it tested by the military, and everybody finds out pretty much immediately, oh, hey... When you shoot a bunch of bullets through this plastic gun, it gets hot and then the plastic starts no. melting off the gun. So the XM8 ends up getting scrapped in 2007, but oh. there is a silver lining. It's not a complete loss because we still have the XM25, the smart grenade launcher. And this thing is actually absolutely awesome. It's pretty much the same grenade launcher from the XM29. The only thing they changed is they bumped it up from a 20 millimeter to a 25 millimeter grenade to make it a little bit more lethal. And now the plan moving forward with this thing is instead of having everybody in the military carry a grenade launcher you're just going to take one guy from the squad and have him be the smart grenade launcher guy like you lose okay. one rifleman you gain one guy that can shoot smart grenades 700 yards it's a pretty fair trade-off they reduced from everyone to one okay well, it's no longer war crime then. And probably a really good idea in a lot of use cases. So they give to the grunts and send them off to war. And seemingly, everybody loves it. The Rangers get a hold of it. They seem to like it. They give it to the 101st Airborne. And those guys absolutely love it. They end up nicknaming it the Punisher. Some of the leaders in the infantry are quoted as saying it'll turn a 30-minute gunfight into a 3-minute gunfight. This thing is wow. absolutely awesome because you can have everybody using their M16s, their M4s, their 240s, their saws. Yeah, keeping people. 
cool. Then suppressing fire, forcing the enemy to hide behind cover, and then just use a grenade to take out the enemy from behind cover, and it's a huge tactical advantage. And this yeah. goes on for years until one day in 2016, the entire narrative changes, and seemingly overnight, the XM25 Punisher becomes a giant piece of shit. Somebody starts Cause... digging up all these old stories, looking for anything in the history of the XM25 that could be used against it. Like, there was this one time back in 2012 where this one ranger unit on this one mission decided that they would rather have a rifleman instead of this grenade launcher therefore this weapon must not be very reliable it's not like the rangers are a special operations unit and, and maybe that particular mission didn't call for a fucking grenade launcher but whatever oh and then there was this one time in 2013 where the weapon malfunctioned one time and all the safety features worked exactly how they were supposed to but the operator of the weapon still got a minor injury so we're going to go ahead and use that as the excuse to can the entire program for you know troop safety because nobody's going to get mad at us if we're trying to protect the troops right right, right. Okay, because here's what we're not going to do. We're absolutely not going to tell the American public that somewhere along the line, somebody remembered, oh, exploding bullets are a war crime, and they have been since the 1800s. I wonder what the difference is between an exploding bullet and a small grenade that gets shot out of a gun. And yeah, yeah, I I almost just just for a fraction of a second, almost had forgotten about that point myself. <laughs> that's that's how easy it is with information but yeah what's the difference and then if you google it holy shit this line has been drawn in the sand since 1868 400 grams oh my god the convent how is this one lighter than the conventional gr uh, sorry heavier than the conventional grenade isn't that the the, the average let me double check this just to be sure. Uh, okay, it ranges for 200 grams to 900, but still, 200 is way lighter. It's literally half if the it's size. If it's 200 grams or less, it's an exploding bullet, and if it's more than that, it's a piece the of weight. ordinance. And a 25 millimeter grenade is apparently less than 400 grams, so this entire project has been a war crime the entire time, right from the get-go. Hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money has now been wasted because somebody that ran this project didn't want to Google shit first. So, I, okay, I gotta ask, how is launching or throwing a conventional grenade okay when this one is not? Oh, perhaps going back to my point that yeah, you, you can explode it in a person's body, right? You can program it to do that. Yeah, yeah, that that may be one of the reasons that they use for, for that case. Well, you know, it's only a war crime if the bullet explodes inside the enemy. This is supposed to explode over the top of the enemy, so this should be completely legal. Buh. Yeah, that is true, but hear me out. If you can point the laser at the wall the bad guy is hiding behind and make the grenade explode a couple inches past that wall, you can also aim the laser at the bad guy and make that grenade explode a couple inches into that bad guy. So yeah, I guess in conclusion, that's the story of the God OICW program. That time the US government decided that they were going to spend three decades and hundreds of millions, if not and they got billions nothing of dollars out of it, to develop almost. a fancy new futuristic grenade launcher that from its inception, the very idea of it was actually illegal. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. Yo, the US military, we need some Toro Zero turn fighter jets here. <laughs> That joke hit too hard. It was very good. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please do go and subscribe to The Fire Electrician. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And I wish you all to have a wonderful evening. See you guys in the next one. Bye.